Well, 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 you guys, look what we got here. The Iron Rock Off-Road 3-Link Long Arm Kit. It is the Rock Link. In today's video, we'll be unboxing the kit, building it, and installing it on the Cherokee. Stay tuned, you guys. <music> So this is the first box. Let's see what's in it. I, I more want to check on if anything is scratched or damaged or missing while unboxing it. Um, I heard that their packing skills in the boxes is really great. So nothing should be damaged, but we'll see. Yeah, some thick cardboard perforated. That looks like the box of hardware. What we got here? Inspect all contents for beginning installation. Looks like we got the directions. And uh, let's see if the most important thing is in the box. Yeah. We got stickers. Oh, we got a giant sticker. It's like one of those big uh, vinyl looking ones. Nice. We'll get those put to the side. See what else came in this box. The hardware. And these look like the two, two or, well, I guess this is all the cross member. These are the side, uh, each side that holds the control arms. And this must be the center section. Yeah, that's, that's heavy. I think it's a quarter inch steel cross member. Yeah, that's thick. All right, I'll get these unwrapped. So this is the cross member. This is insanely strong. The powder coat looks amazing on it. Looks uh, no real scuffs or scratches from the shipping process. Everything was wrapped, overdone on the wrapping, which is awesome. I'd love to see that. And yeah, it's, that's quarter inch. This stuff is heavy duty. It's, uh, it's not going anywhere. This is gonna be able to handle anything you throw at it. This is insanely strong. This goes on the driver's side. It holds the upper link right here and the lower link for the drivers. And then this goes on the passenger. It's a three link design, so it can hold your control arms in place. So if you need to drop the center section to work on your transfer case or your transmission or anything like that, you don't have to deal with undoing the control arms or anything. Uh, I really like that design. It's, uh, it's really smart to have. I'm glad, I'm actually really glad I got this kit. It is, it's already outdoing my expectations. I haven't even installed it yet. All right, so we already bought, unboxed the cross member and the control arm mounts. This box has your drop brackets in case you don't have a slip yoke eliminator and shims for your rear axle. Those are your solid aluminum one inch transfer case drops. And then here is all of the hardware that is for your, uh, I'm guessing your control arms for just about everything, honestly. See, it's a mix of grade eight and and grade 10.9 bolts. And uh, yeah, this is a uh, massive hardware. This, uh, I think this kit is complete overkill. But honestly, in an overland or a wheeler or any type of rig like that, that you're gonna be beating up outdoors and taking to the middle of nowhere to camp, I think you want just about everything overkill so it doesn't leave you stranded. So 
So this is where we're at already. Um, I kind of just laid out all the hardware and everything to the kit on the table and just kind of mocked it together with the hardware just to see how everything fit and just to kind of um, separate all the hardware because since it just comes in a big bag, it looks like a giant jumble and it could get confusing. So I just laid it all out, kind of put everything together already lightly and the only thing I'm iffy about is the cross member bolts that connect to the control arm mount. They're not nylocked or anything like that. They're just standard nuts. Which I mean, I guess is fine if you get a, you know, a ratchet in there and you just crank them down as tight as possible. But uh, I would like some nylock nuts for these. But if you have, so I do have some hardware I won't be using. These will be for the third hole on the cross member. I'm uh, tapping and drilling it to half inch hardware. So I'll have to drill out the back hole on the mounting plate. And then these carriage bolts are for your one inch transfer case uh, drops or one inch um, cross member drop that would go in here. And then these carriage bolts would come in through the bottom. And then these four bolts are for the cross member that go into the existing holes on your unibody frame. Then it does come with some massive hardware. This is already uh, has a nut welded to it, which is awesome because it would be extremely hard to get a wrench up there since it would be so far into the unibody. And then I do have the control arms laid out. Just uh, in the orientation they will be underneath the Jeep. This is, this I guess clears the floor pans. And then I did put the hardware in the ends just to make life a little easier. I did see these are uh, Clevite ends. I guess if you wanted to get a little crazy, you could press these out and uh, press in some Johnny joints. But honestly, I think these Clevite bushings on the end will help with ride quality on the road just to make everything a, a little bit smoother. All right, you guys, so after you get all the hardware out of the bags and sorted, it is time to build the flex joints for the three control arms. And then after that, we are going to adjust the control arms to the length that is specified in the instructions. What I really like is it came with instructions on how to build the flex ends on the control arms. This side is, I'm guessing, for the lower control arms. And then this sheet is for the upper control arm on how to build that. So this all looks really good for the flex joint. This is uh, the ball. The flex ball is polished. Looks really good. Um, I am going to wipe off any remaining uh, oil on it. I am going to clean the inside of the control arm just in case any dust or any dirt has gotten in there. It'll keep everything clean and help assembly go smoother. So what I'm doing after I get everything wiped down and as clean as possible, I am gonna take some grease and just put a light film of grease on the races and the flex ball and the inside of the flex joint on the end of the control arm. So what I did is since the tolerances of the race is so tight to the joint end, I took I put the washer on top after I started the two nuts through the bottom and I took the largest socket I have and I placed it on there and I lightly tapped it with the hammer just to slowly press it down until you could get some thread through the bolts through and then the tolerances are so tight for the nuts that they just kind of hold themselves in place while you tighten them. So once you get to this point where you get two of the bolts and nuts started it's time to just insert the other four and just get a couple turns into there and then after that we will torque it down. So once you get all the nuts and bolts snugged up, the torque specs for the control arms are slightly different. It doesn't measure in foot pounds, it measures in inch pounds. So what I got is I ordered a deflection beam torque wrench that actually tightens in inch pounds. So I will put a link to this in the description. And it says that you first torque all six bolts to 70 inch pounds, then to 85 inch pounds. 
And then from there you in, you install the Zerk and grease the flex end until grease comes out of the races around the ball. And then you retorque the bolts to 85 inch pounds after five minutes. So the deflection beam torque wrench is a quarter inch fitting on the end for sockets. So what I did is you could either take the 530 seconds Allen head or Allen wrench and stick it into the socket that will go on the end of the torque wrench. Or if you do have the little bits the get a 530 seconds bit that'll fit in the quarter inch socket that will go on the end of the torque wrench for you. So with the upper control arm flex joint, you uh, you do the same thing as the lower control arms, but there is no uh, nuts and bolts. The washer on the end is actually threaded, so it makes it a lot easier to just uh, run the run the bolts in there and tighten them to the spec you need. Which it's the same thing. You torque all eight bolts to 50 inch pounds and then 55 inch pounds, and then you grease it. And after that, you wait five minutes and then you grease it to 55 inch pounds again so now since we have all the rod ends built torqued and greased it is time to measure for the length from eye to eye so from the eye of the control arm to the eye of the flex joint and it's the same thing here the eye of the control arm to the eye of the flex joint so let's do that so the first thing we're going to do is measure the length of, for the upper control arm. We have a four and a half inch lift, so it has to be right around 37 and an eighth. But Iron Rock told me, I asked him on Instagram, that it's just kind of a general start to where your control arm should be. And then from there, you can adjust them. So you can uh, have the ride and the spring placement and the caster angle and everything just right for the control arms. All right, you guys, we are at the point of bolting in the cross member. What I'm gonna do is bolt in the side sections and the existing holes, and then mark out the third hole where I will drill and tap it. So let's get to it. So this is how it looks on there. You just line up the two existing holes and then you will drill and tap that front hole. But that's, uh, that's how it's looking. It just kind of sandwiches flush against the inner, uh, the inner frame rail and it uh, fits there really nicely. All right, so now that we have the passenger and driver's side control arm brackets on, it is time to put the cross member in and fasten it all together. If you guys notice, I do have my front and rear drive shaft off. Um, during my slip yoke eliminator, I did not notice on the front case half that connects to the transmission, um, I had a crack in it, about a four inch crack. And I didn't know it was cracked. I thought it was my shift shaft seal the entire time. I've probably been driving with that crack for about, God, I want to say like two years now without having a clue because it was leaking right above it. So it made it look like the shift shaft. But uh, I did drop it off. I got the whole case rebuilt and he put on a front, new front case half for me. And uh, that's why it's a little bit bigger of a job than normal because I had to, you know, put in the T case and now do the long arm lift. All right, guys. So now that we got the cross member and the side. All right, guys. So now that we have the side sections and the cross member in and everything tight. I think it is time to start installing control arms. So what I'm going to do is uh, do the lower control arms first. And then uh, I am going to cut off the lower control arm brackets. And then from there I will put in the upper control arm. Alright, we are at the point of no return when it comes to a long arm lift. It is time to install the lower control arm on the driver's side but you need to cut off the lower control arm bracket that is on the body. So once you cut this off, there is no going back. So here is the driver's side lower control arm bracket cut off. Um, yeah, that, 
that's kind of hard to cut off. You got to notch it with the sawzall in a bunch of spots and then notch it with a with the cutting wheel on the grinder and then just bend pieces off and and grind it flat and bend more and grind it flat but you got to be really careful because of those those are uh um i know they're uh brake lines and i think uh fuel lines so yeah if you want to blow up hit one of those with the grinder or the sawzall and you'll have a good time but yeah that's uh that's the best it's gonna be for me. I'm not making a career move out of removing a lower control arm bracket. So I'll get some paint, paint it up, and uh, put the lower control arm on it. So last night before I called it quits, I had the hardest time getting the bolt all the way through the control arm and through this uh, piece of the bracket right here. So what I ended up doing was uh, ratchet strapping the front passenger tire forward while ratchet strapping the the front and rear driver's tire closer together to cock the axle over to make the bolt fit through that eyelet and for the life of me it still wasn't doing it until i realized that the upper control arm was uh still bolted in so it was limiting it so once i got that control arm out of there from the upper on the passenger side one or two clicks with the ratchet strap, it got in place and uh, I was able to put the bolt through. So now that that's the lower control arm for the driver's side is done, it is time to chop the bracket for the passenger side. Then I could get the passenger side lower control arm in. One of the things I learned too while doing this was remove this inner sleeve, remove that and then take a sawzall with a good blade and cut along the bracket on both sides individually and then whatever's left over notch it with the sawzall and then take a pair of vice grips and lock it on there and just bend it and break off the tabs and then whatever you have left over just uh hit it with the grinder and grind away all the metal to try to make it as flat and have it look like the other side awesome we got the lower control arm on the passenger side in we used the uh, the same ratchet strap method and it went in really easy. So now it is time to move on to the upper control arm on the driver's side. So what I just learned is uh, when you unbolt the only upper control arm you have left, the front axle likes to tilt forward. So what I did is uh, I took the bottle jack from the back of my Jeep and I put it on this spot on the spring perch and it tilted the axle forward enough and it'll hold it in place so I could put that new upper control arm in. So I just noticed that the bushing in the top of the axle is pretty blown out. I'm pretty sure it's the original from 1996. So uh, I'm gonna get online soon and buy a Johnny joint. And in the meantime, I'm still gonna install the upper control arm and everything. But very, very soon, I'm going to replace that joint with a, a greasable Johnny joint that should be a, a lot better than that rubber bushing. All right, so once you get the upper control arm in, it is time to torque down all the bolts. The uh, upper control arm nut at the axle is 60 foot-pounds. And then the upper control arm bolt at the cross member is a 135 foot-pounds. And then the lower control arm bolt is 135 foot-pounds at the axle and at the cross member. And then from there, just double check everything and you should be good to go. And after you get all of the nuts and bolts torqued to those specs, it is time to check the caster angle on your axle. I am at four and a half inches of lift, so my caster is at five and a half degrees. And I did measure it. I am at actually six and a half, but it doesn't make a giant difference just being one degree like that. If it does feel funny or I get vibrations or anything or tire wear, I will put it to five and a half degrees. And with the caster, this is the best place to measure. So I will put this um, angle finder in 
the description down below but you measure the caster right there on the driver's side and the same on the passenger side and from what my buddy told me he's a mechanic he says that your the caster on the driver's side let's say this caster 6.3 the caster on the passenger should be like 6.5 which that's what i measured and that's exactly what it came out to so we are good to go i'll finish torquing everything up get all the tools put away and uh, we'll take it for a drive so after checking for correct caster angle i installed the third bolts in the control arm brackets along with grinding the bracket and the unibody frame so i could tack weld it in place as extra security After finishing the install, we took the Jeep out for a test drive and I gotta say, long arms are a hundred times better on the highway than short arms. I really wish I would have done this years ago. But on that note, thank you so much for watching. I hope the tips and tricks in this video help you out with your Iron Rock long arm install on your Cherokee. And thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for our next video. Bye.